Hey guys and girls, we've got a fresh one today straight from the fields of Akihabara. This is a Yokogawa 2554 DC voltage current standard. I've been looking for one of these for a while, hoping it would pop up, and it did. There's actually two of them there, and I got this one because it looked like it was in the best condition. Uh, it's quite interesting. It's got um, voltage and current. You can dial in quite precisely and use that for calibration or um, testing digital analog converters or 4 to 20, 0 to 20 milliamp, 0 to 10 volt sensors and that sort of thing. So we've got uh, two sides of the range switch. We've got 1 milliamp to 100 milliamps, 1 milliamp, 10 milliamp, 100 milliamp for the current output ranges. And the voltage range is 10 millivolts to 100 volts. We've got 10 millivolts, 100 millivolts, 1 volt, 10 volt and 100 volts. Then down here, of course, we've got the power switch with an indicator light, polarity, positive and negative so you can switch the polarity of the output terminals uh, output on and standby so you can turn this thing on let it warm up let it stabilize and have the output off and then you switch that on exactly when you need it so you can turn that on and off to isolate or turn on the output on and off without having to turn the whole unit on and off and affecting all your um your settle settling time and making sure it's all settled in and warmed up and everything then we've got the over voltage and over current indicators here to tell you if you go on over range and uh, the output terminal, so we've got a ground or a guard here, we've got our high and low outputs, and it looks like we've got two terminals extra here. I haven't actually taken the time to look at the um, manual, or if, you know, even if I can get a manual online. Yokogawa, I think, generally are pretty good about manuals, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm hoping they are. Uh, so I, I, I haven't even looked at that yet, so that's going to be the next thing. I just got a bit excited and <laughs> wanted, to, wanted to get this thing open and see what's inside. So if we flip it around to the back, we have got ground terminal here, we've got a fuse, 1 amp fuse, and the normal IEC input. Uh, 100 volts, plus or minus 10%, 47 to 63 hertz. So we've got a little bit of leeway on the frequency, but the, uh, the voltage, this is definitely not a dual voltage or a universal voltage. I think it's uh, because there's a transformer just under here, so that might be why. Uh, it's not using a, a switch mode power supply, using a probably linear power supply or something in there, so it's a bit more um, clean with the uh, the output. Less noise bouncing around inside the box there. So the box is a little bit beat up. There's a, a bit of a bulge on the vents here, but the uh, handle is a bit bent just here, so we might have to give that a tweak. And for sure we're going to have to do something about these output banana jacks, fix those up. So without further ado... How do we open this thing up? Looks like maybe those four screws on the bottom there. One, two, three, and four. So I'll get my screwdriver. And let's have a look and see what we find inside. And I can, uh, once I get it working, I can test it against the old key site. Four, three, four, four, six, one, a six and a half digit multimeter I've got sitting on the bench here too. So that will give us a good idea of how good it is. Alright, so that's looking uh, pretty interesting inside with all the big switches here. Got some uh, copper tabs. They uh, contact onto the uh, that aluminium frame here to make sure that this has a good connection for grounding to stop any interference. W -E -W y E W brand, U. U brand, I've seen that brand around in Japan. So this is definitely a Japanese made product from Japanese made parts. It looks like a nice little mechanism going on there. So you can see here, there's three discs. So when you turn the knob to the different ranges, that disc rotates. And then you can see the numbers changing it through the little window there. They do the same sort of thing with their, um, their resistance uh, decade boxes. You get these big boxes with the, the knobs you can dial in what resistance you want. They have the same idea in those. It's a pretty neat idea, I reckon. So what next? Um, I'm going to lift that out. Oh! Oh! It's battery powered! There's a battery in here! Look at that! That's really interesting. I was completely not expecting that. So I unplug that. I'm going to pull that battery pack out and have a bit of a closer look at that. That is surprising. You can uh, come across some of these surprises when you don't bother to look at the uh, instruction manual. So a NICAD. Of course it's NICAD because it's an older thing. 
1998, uh, January, 1998.1, that's January, of course, first 1998, 9.6 volt, 1,200 milliamp hour for five hours. So I can give out 1.2 amps for five hours. So they look like, uh, what are they? Sub C, I think. Yeah, uh, two-thirds C, sub C. So they're probably near the end of their life, but I can get new ones, no worries, and I'll probably just replace that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to bother putting nickel metal hydrides in. Uh, I'll probably just put NICADs at this stage. I'll be thinking about that because um, uh, I have to alter the charge circuitry and I don't really want to have to go and re-engineer this thing. But if I just put NICADs in, it's just a direct replacement. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's really interesting that that's there. I'll just uh, quickly put this back so I don't lose any parts. I guess if I go and read the manual, I'll soon find out that whether that, that can run on that by itself or if it uh, needs 100 volts to, to be connected. Okay, so look at that. Oh, that big switch there. I'll turn it over. You might get a better look from the other side. That's a range switch. Multiple levels. So how's that working? So it looks like we've got multiple switch contacts and they're broken out on these uh, phenolic boards to a uh, mylar sort of looking flat flex. There's a little bit of dent there. If I can get that on the camera. Ugh. So I have to double check. Just on the corner there. Someone's bumped it there. So I have to double check that, make sure it's not broken any traces, but it looks alright. It doesn't seem to have broken anything. It's just a bit of a dent. And there's something interesting just here as well. Like a silver can. Ah, uh, uh, that's a... Uh, no, nah, that's not that interesting, actually. I think I've just figured out what it is. Uh, it's a transformer. It's a shielded transformer. But there are some precision wound resistors there. You see here. Just there. There's two more. Uh, I'll turn it around. Two more there. You can see at the end of my finger. They are wire wound resistors. There's a number of them in there. And they'll be hand wound and trimmed. I'll probably put some deoxid on the, uh, the switches just to make sure they're all nice and clean. And um, then we've got the pots. Some uh, sitting there. And then these blue ones, right down, one there, one there, a few others over, just right in there, and they're adjusted from this side. So you sit this on the bench, the correct way up, and you can dial them through some holes in the PCB and in the side to uh, calibrate this thing. The uh, calibration is like you set the, uh, the dial to zero, and uh, this to like, you know, whatever range, and then you you dial that pot and then you set it to a hundred and you dial the other pot and then you set it to one volt, hundred volts. Go through and you just dial each pot in to, uh, to zero everything out. Another thing that I like about this, because I'm going to have to replace these, is that this top panel can be taken off and all the switches and stuff stay inside. So if I take the knobs off, two screws there, two screws there, and this painted section will just come away, but all the... Uh, the switches and, and whatnot, they're on it like the chassis inside. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take these out. The hole for these is a lot larger than um, normal banana jacks or the uh, binding post jacks. So I'm going to put a piece of uh, aluminium in there. There's, there's already a piece in there. So I might take that out. I'll see if I can take it out. Hopefully I can. And then um, I'll put a um, another piece in there with smaller holes. And that will um, mean I can uh, fit the, the new jacks. Slight bend to it. I don't know if you can see that. This part here is bent down and that's slightly bent up. So I might um, straighten that out a little bit too. And uh, yeah, most of it doesn't even need to be touched. Now we're in. So there's our wire wound resistors. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We've got some big bolt capacitors over here. A few, a few others laying around the place. What are these? NEC C25 
4A, 157A, 254A, I think they're just transistors, or, no, maybe they're op amps, old, old style metal case things. Looks like we've got some uh, calibration down here, a few little, uh, there's a, some 10 turn pots there and some uh, single turn pots. That's the uh, can I was talking about. I think that's just a um, I think that's just a transformer. Got a bunch of wires coming in and a few coming out. T5, T6, T8, T7. Yeah, that's T. T is probably for transformer. But that'll be the power supply and uh, charging board for the battery. This battery here. And all the other magic happens in this one. So, basically the next step is to uh, go and find a manual, because this is looking rather analog. And um, we might be able to get some more information from the manual about calibration and how the thing maybe works. If we're even really lucky, we might even find an English manual. Here we are, with a new battery pack, all done. Pulled all the bits off the old pack, and uh, Captain taped them on after I soldered the, uh, the batteries together, all the little tabs. And um, yeah, it's exactly the same size. So that's going to work out perfectly and it's double the capacity as well because advances in technology over the last 20 or 30 years. Um, got some heat shrink here. Uh, I'm not sure what size that was. It was 40, 55, uh, 50, 65. About 65 mil, 70 mil. And that will slip on there. Just like that. Went down to Akihabara, got myself a uh, heat gun, Hako FV-310, ceramic cartridge, replaceable cartridge in there and all that. And it's got a temperature and airflow control. So basically what we can do is we can dial in the temperature we need. Now as for the, uh, the capacities, I did test these. Uh, these ones tested absolutely pathetic. Um, actually they, uh, they're at 266 milliamp hour, which is... <laughs> Less than what a single battery should be. Um, completely pathetic. This one tested at 2138 milliamp hour, which is perfect because these are rated at 21 milliamp hour. Uh, sorry, 2100 milliamp hour. So we got 2138. So they're slightly above. Now the thing with uh, when you're testing batteries, you'll find that if you charge and discharge at a higher rate, you'll get a lower capacity. That's just a function of the chemistry in the batteries. Um, internal resistance and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I uh, charge and discharge these batteries at the uh, manufacturer's rated specs in the data sheet and I got the stated uh, capacity which is fantastic. So all we've got to do now is uh, heat shrink this down, stick a, a little label on there and the battery is finished. Battery is in just down underneath here, sits across that way and that's working well so if I unplug it um, it'll run uh, seamlessly, plug it in, it keeps running seamlessly, it's it, working quite well. So that's all done. Uh, you'll notice that I've got these blue uh, little cylinders on here. That's actually replacing those light blue ones I showed you before on the other side of the board where you poked your screwdriver through the hole. Uh, I found that they were, they were only single turn and I found they a little bit hard to um, to dial in the exact value because you, know, you, you give it the slightest tweak and you know, you're jumping back and forth over the value that you want, you know. And also, because they were old, they um, got a bit of dust in them and whatnot, and gummed up, and they're starting to strip out a bit. So, I replaced them with these. And these are actually pretty cool. I think they're made by Bournes. Yeah, they are. And um, they're actually a four-turn pot. They do that with a little mini planetary gearbox inside, which is pretty cool. And uh, it just gives me more resolution, and they've got a better temperature uh, coefficient, so they don't drift with temperature so much. And, yeah, I managed to dial it right in. Uh, also, on the side here, I've replaced uh, some of these with... Uh, 30 turn pots and whatnot, better temperature coefficient and uh, it's, managed, it's allowed me to uh, get this thing really really accurate, really spot on. There's one range which is governed by this pot, the uh, 100 milliamp range which is a little bit low but it's um, it's alright, like I mean it's only got three digits of adjustment and it's a, like a field, bit of field equipment, bench top sort of stuff and it's, it's not a super precise thing and uh, uh, a couple decimal points low on the 100, 100 milliamp range is, I can live with that. The rest of it is absolutely spot on, like spot on to four decimal places and stuff. So um, uh, to calibrate it, 
basically what I've done is for the the uh, voltage ranges, you just plug it straight into your uh, multimeter, and uh, you just tweak the dials, hold your tongue at the right position, and uh, wear the right coloured socks. Check the phase of the moon and whatnot, and um, dial it in until it's it says what it should say. And uh, for the milliamp ranges, you need a current shunt. So I've actually made a few here. There's a whole bunch of them. I only need three of these because two of them were for something else. But I've got a uh, a 10 ohm. It's just uh, 10 100 ohm resistors, 1% resistors. I did that so that they would uh, kind of even out their um, their tolerances. So some might be a little bit above uh, a 10 ohm. Some might be a little bit lower, and they kind of even out. Well, sorry, 100 ohm because 100 divided by 10 is 10. So they might be a little bit above 100 ohm, a little bit below 100 ohm, and then they kind of even out. And I've measured that with my uh, calibrated uh, six and a half digit multimeter, my bench top multimeter, uh, with the Kelvin clips, the 4Y measurement. And this is one's come to 9.9770 ohms. Uh, we've got a 1 ohm, uh, sorry, a 1K ohm here. And this is actually really accurate. It's 1.000794 kilo ohms. So that's like spot on. And uh, six and a half digits, that's, um, you know, Right, use every digit on, on the multimeter to measure that one. And then we've got the uh, 100 ohm, which is 100.113, so that's that's good enough as well. So that's what I use my current shunts to measure the current output of this thing. And, um, oh, yeah, the binding posts. Nearly forgot about the new binding posts. So what we've got, if I kind of put that up there, I'll have to hold it. Um, this is my uh, fancy... Cable that I've made. I've got some Pomona low EMF leads, and then I got some uh, shielded braid and some uh, nylon braid, and made it into a shielded cable. So that gives me really good, uh, really good connection to my multimeter with a low EMF shielded little connectors and stuff. So that makes for a stable signal. But here, I'll take the bottom off. Actually, I'll, I'll just unplug it because I don't want to zap myself. I've just finished uh, calibrating it. Battery powered, so I'll turn it off. If I take the bottom off and disconnect the battery, uh, there's the battery there, the new battery installed. Fantastic. Um, I end up 3D printing an adapter plate. So you can see it, if I can get the angle right, just there. It says it's actually in one piece, two pieces. So I've got a back plate there. And then you can just see, if I get the angle right, there we go. You can see there with those two connectors, there's a little bit poking up. And that goes down behind in here as a spacer. I, I was originally planning to use aluminium, but I uh, 3D print it because it comes out the front as well. If I angle that further around, you can see they, it kind of sticks out to give the right offset and whatnot. Because uh, I figured out what these two uh, pins are for. They're actually for a, uh, a little dial that goes on the front. And um, if I manage to find one of those, it clicks on and then plugs into there. And I need to have these the same offset from the front panel as the original binding post so that it will connect in properly. Otherwise, if they're further in, it's not going to plug in properly. If it's further out, they won't make contact here, this little module. So that's in there now. Nice little three printed adapter holding those binding posts, those uh, low EMF Pomona binding posts. And we're pretty much done. So what I'll do is I'll... Um, I'll put a, uh, up on the screen now, I'll put the results. So uh, we've got the uh, 10 millivolt range there, 100 millivolt range, 1 volt range, 10 volt range, 100 volt range. Then we go to the, uh, the current ranges, we've got 1 milliamp, 10 milliamp, and 100 milliamp. And that's another project finished, all done. Fantastic. So that's going to go on the bench and test some multimeters. I've got a couple of multimeters to test, some really bad ones and some pretty good ones. Even got an analog one there. It's a half decent quality which I might see how it stacks up. But that is all good. Thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, as always we'll see you next time.